this slide is about what might be termed unconsciousness uh, versus consciousness and how in our world many people operate from unconsciousness without constant understanding of what's happening in their lives, in their relationships, in the world as a whole, and uh, to communicate that any, that any of these uh, items listed here on the on this slide can sh shift a person who is very conscious from being conscious into unconsciousness almost immediately. So we would suggest that, <clears throat> uh, and that there are high costs to that occurring to us as individuals, to our families, to our nations, to our, our cultures, to our genders, to our races, uh, and, and to humanity as a species. So if, if anyone, if human beings, which is a natural, normal thing, it happens to everybody in some uh, venue or some moment of their life or their, some relationship or some show, social process, if they go into a fear reactive state or mode, then immediately they have become unconscious and, and, and they may imagine that they are operating in a very conscious way, even though they have become unconscious. And we'll say what, why we would say such a thing, why it's important to understand how it works. Uh, so it, fear itself is a process of usually unconsciously referencing some information that we've recorded in our system and projecting it to our mind's eye as a picture of uh, potentially something bad that or unwanted or painful that could happen. So if if we if we said something socially that might be unac unacceptable or imagined to be unacceptable to people, then we could go into a fear reaction, saying, "Oh gosh, I could be embarrassed. I could be criticized. I could be attacked. I could be uh, abandoned or ostracized or." Are, are diminished socially or uh, politically or, or relationally. And that fear reaction would be seen as a way by, for our systems to be, to potentially arrive at a new state of safety. So if, if somebody said an, an off color joke or said something uh, critical of an, another uh, gender race, religion, nation, age group, whatever, they might fear the reaction of the people around them. And that fear has been driving, that process of fear has been driving us to be what might be termed ever more politically correct in our speech. And there's some good that has come from that. So we're not saying that it's not a good thing. We are suggesting that we can get to such awarenesses through actual love and compassion and care rather than fear of being judged or criticized or abandoned by society. So this, this fear reaction process <clears throat> uh, occurs out of fear of us either judging ourselves or ju being judged by uh, and punished by other people. Uh, in whatever numerous ways our imagination can think up. So we would suggest that fear reactions are both a process of referencing prior uh, pain or suffering relationally or socially that we've recorded in our systems, simultaneous to our imagination projecting, at, at often at a subconscious level, that bad things of some sort could happen as a result of our actions, our decisions, our behaviors, our words, our own emotional process, or the way we relate to other individuals or groups. So if we, as a, as a species, continue to cycle in this fear reactive process, which is both a, a projection dynamic as well as a reaction dynamic, stuck between those both being illusions, meaning the projection of fears onto reality of, of bad things that could happen is not does not allow us to see what truly is in the present moment. The, the 
the the tense, stressful, anxiety-producing reaction of fear tends to keep us from being able to be conscious from moment to moment and actually do something that will be beneficial or constructive, constructive or healthy or wholesome or serving or connecting or, or healing between us and other people. So fear reactions themselves, we see as a fundamental challenge for us politically, socially, uh, economically, uh, and, and in terms of being able to collaborate as individuals, as nations, as organizations, as cultures, and as peoples. Uh, in second to those that basic fear projection and reaction cycle, we would suggest that resonance with fear is uh, potentially or being entrained in other people's fear can be just as defunctionalizing of individuals and collectives. When when the attack on the uh, the twin towers, nine eleven occurred. Does it make sense that there was a collective resonance and with fear in the United States and a fear reaction that turned into anger or hate, even hatred and or destructive action towards another nation, Iraq? And, and our fear reaction told us in, in our imaginations that if we just defunctionalized Iraq or attacked them or took them over or, or stopped their government from working the way it was, that somehow that would make us safer. And we would suggest that that's not the case. In, in our world, it, that reaction, that fear reaction and that action we took as a result has not made terrorism go away. And it's not improved our relationships internationally. So resonating tribally or collectively or nationally or populistically with fear tends to shift us into unconscious, less functional, less wise and discerning and capable modes. And it can feel, it can be imagined to be an in, a, a way of increasing our safety or stability while, while simultaneously actually making us less safe as an individual or as a people. Uh, there are, uh, I'm, I can only guess that in the United States, there's, there's more than a billion guns uh, that, are, that are not making children in school safer. They're not making people who, I mean, and, and it's, I, this is just a guess. I, I think there's nearly 300 mass shootings that have occurred just this year. And more people feeling afraid, driving them to buy more guns is not making us safer. It's actually creating more violence. In Japan, as far as I understand the latest statistics, it's unusual for them to have more than three or four acts of gun violence in a year. For us, it's thousands and thousands and thousands. So you, you see the disparity. Fear becomes a rationalization for potential violence that is not truly diminishing of violence and actually proliferates violence. There's also a process of, that hum, human beings operate from. It's part of our social process and it's us getting caught up in the dramas of the moment emotionally and resonating with those emotional dramas, whether it's anger, hatred, fear, uh, judgmentalness, criticism, resentment, sadness, uh, shame, guilt, whatever it is. The, these collective energies are just part of this ongoing social drama process. And as soon as we become entrained in it, we, we become it. It defines our decisions, our thought processes, our, our creative potential, or it takes away our potential to truly be uh, creative as individuals and as groups. And, and, and this process of, 
of ever more social or relational or political or economic dramas being foisted upon us in the news or, or inundating us on an ongoing basis, it's not empowering us. It, it, it's partly educational, certainly, and it's also distortive of us truly understanding what's truly happening in a way that's truly empowering. So we would suggest that this dynamic of ongoing social and relational and political and economic and uh, cultural drama is itself a, it generates an inability for us to learn optimally as a nation and as a species. So it, it creates an incapacity to truly understand with wisdom, uh, because we're all we're caught up in battling each other about our opinions, our prejudices, our biases, our preferences, our fears, our wants, and our beliefs. And, and that process doesn't culminate in shared understandings that are actual, act, actually healthy, sustainable, beneficial, useful, helpful, and healthy. So the, we would suggest that this social and relational drama process is a dynamic of tribal entrainment into tribal energies and narratives. If you've ever heard political pundits say the words, oh, a lot of people are saying this, or everybody feels this way. Well, that is a, a divisive, manipulative communication that a lot of politicians would would use to try to get people entrained into agreement with their narrative that they're espousing. There may be five people that agree with them or five people that they know of that are feeling that way or thinking whatever they're saying. And if they say, well, oh no, everybody's feeling this way. I talked to five people and to my system, that means everybody on the planet feels this way. So that is an illusion, a delusion that, that is, is trying to be distributed often through social media in order to generate a climate of resonated with illusion or uh, emotional reaction in order to then leverage it for political purposes, to achieve political goals, not to, not to get everyone to help and work together and create a, a beautiful, wonderful, sustainable future, they use that in order to pit one tribal faction against another for their own personal uh, political purposes or benefit. The, what we call leaders do that in political leaders. So, and they assume right now where if the political system is looking at uh, it's a win or die mentality. It's it's see instead of seeing quote the other side or, or all the other groups in the world or the nation that have different political views as potential collaborators, they're looked upon as if they must be defeated, vilified, dismissed, undermined, sabotaged, destroyed, or uh, completely uh, rendered in non credible in the minds and hearts and emotions of the folks in the nation or in the world. That's not a recipe for, for functional collaborative result. That's not a recipe for a healthy society. That's not a recipe for us being empowered to solve for the climate crisis. That's not a recipe for people understanding and loving each other and benefiting, benefiting each other's lives. So we just wanted to communicate that dynamic as a, a, a way to, to interpret these dynamics. Not, we're not trying to vilify or judge or criticize the current process. We're trying to offer an alternative way forward collectively that is unifying, mobilizing, healthy, wholesome, caring, loving, respectful, non-judgmental, non-critical, not making anyone less and not against anyone or anything, and, and which is for 
everyone's well-being, sustainable future, harmony between humanity and the planet and all of its species. So uh, another item on this list is the fear of being either rejected or judged or controlled by somebody else. This is an endemic fear in humanity that we've seen repeated over and over and over. People fear being abandoned. They fear being made less than. They fear being criticized. They fear losing position, power, or status, or money. They, they fear losing influence. And, and these are being rejected. Or, or just being judged to be wrong or bad or less than somebody else. And this constant and ongoing internal fear process doesn't support collaborative effort because we're not busy collaborating, we're busy fearing collaboration. We're busy fearing the possible negative results of being close and uh, working with other people and uh, generating and solving for the climate emergency. And, uh, and, and fearing that we might be outcompeted or, or dismissed or diminished in some way. We're so busy being afraid, we're not actually doing enough constructive uh, things in the world. We, and we, of course, we also fear all forms of pain, emotional, mental, spiritual, energetic, and physical pain. We fear in all of its forms, and, and thus we try, we're constantly pain avoidant rather than diving in with both feet into all of the ne potentially necessary pain and challenge of solving for climate change or, or the climate crisis. So this fear process, if, uh, if we could uh, metaphorically imagine uh, if you were walking down a trail and you saw what appeared to be a poisonous snake on the trail, what would you be focused on? Likely, you'd be focused on the snake. You wouldn't say, oh, I, I have a seemingly poisonous snake in front of me, so I'm going to go look at all the pretty flowers and trees, and I'm not going to watch the snake to make sure it doesn't bite me. So this process of focusing on what we fear the possibility of rather than focusing on how can we work together? How can we collectively solve our challenges? How can we generate a peaceful future for all of humanity? How can we create a future for our children? The, the, the fear keeps us from focusing on those positive intentions. And so that's a single pointed focus on fear or mistrust or distrust or having what we want, or competing against other people rather than a single pointed focus on generating a healthy, happy future, loving one another, valuing one another, serving one another humbly and with a conscious service intention that will then build a future that, that actually is sustainable. Uh, we may also, uh, reactively <clears throat> shift into agreement with anyone else's deeply held belief or positionality. And if, if somebody says, oh, no, this is the way reality is. You have to believe exactly what I'm saying because I'm right and I know I'm right and everybody should do what I think because I'm so good or smart or better or no better or I'm such an expert or whatever. That, that tendency for people to shift into agreement with certitude or another person's deeply held belief or, or narcissistically uh, focused on seeming absolutes is, is, is something that is a, a, a common human tendency. And we don't suggest it. We're just saying that that, is a lot, that happens a lot in our world. And it doesn't allow people to remain consciously discerning from moment to moment. Thank you, Henry. Uh, it doesn't allow us to remain consciously discerning from moment to moment and see what is rather than what the political system is telling us or what the news is telling us or what uh, certainly not what John is telling us. Uh, it, it, it doesn't support conscious wisdom, development of conscious wisdom 
that's sovereign and independent from the environmental dynamics we experience. So if also shifting into safety and control modes or mistrust or distrust modes or competitive modes, where I have to get mine mode or it has to be my way mode. As soon as we do, as soon as we shift into those modes, we shift out of the capacity to collaborate in an equal, honoring, respectful way, in a in a way that would serve every everyone's good, the well-being of uh, all other human beings and the planet. And uh, the second to last item. Some people want to generate realities for other people. They want the world to be the way they want the world to be. They they want to, and, it, and often it's quite a self-serving process. They say, oh, I want, this is what I want for the world. And it just so happens that it's going to make me really happy if it happens. Or it's going to make my ego feel really good if it happens or I'm going to get a lot of recognition or credit or power or money or status if this result happens. So that dynamic of uh, to, say, to say this is the way things should be, and these people are bad and I'm good. They're wrong and I'm right. They're less than me and I'm better than them. That, that kind of narrative that they then speak through as if it's a truth, we would suggest is, is sometimes distorting of reality. And political pundits may, may speak through these modes. They may, they may say, uh, the Democrats may say Republicans bad, Democrats good. The Republicans may say Democrats bad, Republicans good pointing at each other and saying that one is good and one is bad, one is right, one is wrong, one is going to bring everything good, the other is going to bring everything bad. That That is ta and talking past each other and not learning from each other or collaborating for the common good. So we would suggest that that process is unconscious also. And, and the last item on this list, and this would be the, the last slide probably for today, is what we project to be true or assume to be true or imagine to be true is always an obscuration. It's an imagined perception. It's not a, a, a understanding of what really truly is. And it's not even intended to be an accurate perception of what really and truly is. It's meant as a way to, through our own projections and expectations, to affect reality, to become that which we would prefer or feel is necessary.